What's up, guys? And welcome to One Realm. As always, I'm your host Diego here with Thomas. So, guys. And needless to say, we have a ton of shit to talk about. <laughs> I mean, okay. over the past what few days now, NetherRealm has been releasing a ton of content, and it just so happens to be days where I'm extremely busy and we haven't been able to record. So I guess we have to talk about. Let's see who 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 all's there been? Cassie Cage today. They released show. Hey, yeah. Uh, Katana, Katana. Noob Cybot. Who else? Song. Another face song. Um, and, Jackie and yeah. Kodo. And Kodo, yeah. Oh yeah, and Aaron Black. We haven't talked about him yet. Oh yeah, Aaron That's Black. It. So there's just so much to talk about. I guess let's just go ahead and start off with your favorite Katana. I was hoping we didn't start that. Let's do it. <laughs> um, I'm mixing notions about it right now. And here's the thing. A character is not official until I hear a voice. And why is that? Why is that exactly? Just because, like, it doesn't. It's a, the same reason why I never really gave a shit for um, Baraka or um, Reptile in K9. Now, yes, Baraka had a few lines, but are very few. Reptile had no line. Had no lines. So it's like they're not real characters until I hear their voice. Okay. And also with the whole changing of, I guess, the totem pole, I guess, with passing, get, people losing their jobs with the voice acting. Like, you, I don't know who this new Katana could be, because I don't know if it's Karen Stratham or not. Yeah, they haven't said so it's just like, yet, right? There is no, well, I guess, because the game, of course, hasn't come out yet, and they haven't even announced the characters, but there's been no confirmation of her being a returning care returning actress right like un, apart from yeah. apart from uh, I mean, Gao, i guess because you know he is technically returning in the role of, Sha- of shang Tsung, but yeah i think i mean another one there. too was like luke kane i can't connect with luke kane to actually hear his voice mm-hmm. all that we hear is kind of loud yeah that's true there isn't a single moment that, we, that we've seen so far that has luke kane talking is there nope Not a single we've one. seen a lot but it's like we we already we already knew Luke Kane and Katana both were gonna be there, but now I just need to put a voice to those faces, and I can move on with this. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, right? Like, those are two pretty big characters. You would expect them to have story trailers in which they talk about, they at least have their voice a little bit. So it might be a case of, like you said, you know, them having changed voice actors. So they're trying to like keep that human game because they don't want to kind of throw some people off for a little bit or get on some people's mm-hmm. nerves. And it could also be maybe they're having. I don't know, like maybe they kind of relate with certain lines and certain people's dialogue and stuff, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, I was definitely expecting you to be extremely excited about Katana, but I guess. Oh, I love the look. I love the look, but just like, it's the same look you see. So I'm not sure how much you've actually seen, like, behind, not behind the scenes, but the stuff around the games, but the actual mainstream. She's on the page for customizations. Okay. So I've seen this look already before, and it looks great uh, in a different lighting. But at the same time, it's like I need something more to go, not only just a voice, but some kind of gameplay as well. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Because, I mean, like, technically, I guess you could kind of think, like, these characters could even just be in the story mode, not even necessarily even be playable. Like, technically, they're not that crazy, but you know, still, I, I yeah. Think, yeah, I'm just saying, like, technically, until we see gameplay, we can't be 100% sure that's not going to that's gonna be the case. I mean, or just so they know how your favorite characters play. Mm-hmm. Just at least have an idea of what you can expect, yeah. Yeah. Because at least I like to look at combos, where like beforehand, I like to look at combos that I would never be able to pull off because I never wanted to try that hard. So now I'm like, okay, now since I actually want to try. I need to see what I'm up against. Like, what's some strings I can start? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do with her this time. Because traditionally, I've always had a lot of issues with Katana. I mean, in terms of gameplay, of course. Story-wise, she's fine. All that, but in terms of gameplay, I always have a really, really hard time getting used to her and really being effective with her in any way whatsoever. So I'm hoping that this time around, maybe it'll be a little bit easier for me. But I'm definitely looking forward to trying her out. And uh, I guess the next... Let's just go and talk about Shang Tsung, of course, he's the first DLC character, which it's it actually it's really exciting for somebody like I don't I don't know how many people that are listening to this have already pre ordered the the premium edition or whatever. 
and I already have the DLC, but like it's it's a it's a pretty big sigh of relief for me to see that they're bringing in Shang Tsung, and it's going to be a classic Mortal Kombat character that I really want to play as, and of course they're bringing back Tagawa as the actor. So like it's just it's the best of both worlds. Really, I'm I'm extremely excited to see Shang Tsung. Oh yeah, I am mean, too. But I guess there is a kind of a gauge that a lot of people have been like people like me, you, maybe Cyborg, and a few other people. I completely forget. Because we I do like it, but at the same time, somebody brought a good point to me when I looked at our video today, was that we're paying for a character that has already been inside this, in this part of this new timeline. Okay, I see what so you mean makes, there. Yeah. yeah. And so, as I said, my biggest thing is I don't even have to fight them in story mode. I just want them to be in story mode. So my question is, will Shang have a part in story mode at all? Or will he ever be a prominent character again? Huh. Well, I definitely think that he'll probably eventually be a prominent character again, just because he's just because of, you know, who he is and what he represents for the series. As for this game, I don't really know. I would expect him to be at least in the story mode to make a cameo, because I feel like any character we're going to get in DLC this time around, unless it's like guest character or something like that, I kind of have a feeling they're going to at least have an appearance in the, in the story mode. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just think that if they're if they're already announcing him right now, it's because there's probably they have some, yeah, he's probably gonna have some something right there. Yeah, so I I think that might be the case. And of course, it's it's a huge thing. And I think that the like he just just you know how can I put it? Okay, they got they got a, a relatively big name actor. You know, he's could say say has been in a lot of huge movies. Of course, a Mortal Kombat movie. He's been in a lot of things that kids have seen, like Johnny Tsunami and stuff like that. So he is a prominent role. So I think that any time you get an actor like that, who has a background and probably isn't, you know, extremely cheap, I think right. that you're probably guaranteed to be putting him at least a little bit in the story mode. Whether he'll have a huge role or whether he'll be just kind of a side guy, kind of there, maybe just making a cameo or something like that. I don't know, but I definitely think he will be in the story mode just because, you know, of who they hire to do the voice. Right. He's probably going to be right there, too. I mean, I definitely like, hope he's there. I mean, like, you, you can't you can't not have him in there, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I completely... I want to be... You know me, I love story more than anything else about more combat. Well, that's for sure. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> story mode is, the, is definitely the most... Well, not story mode itself, but the story, yeah, the lore. Oh, no, know, this story mode is pretty lit. It's definitely looking good, man. Like everything I'm seeing so far, it, I I keep on expecting to be disappointed by something I see, but as of right now, everything everything is looking good. Like even that moment where Kung Lao throws the throws his hat and cuts off Garrus's head, and then he he or Garrus, whatever however it's pronounced, and he builds himself back up, and that's that's a great moment. So even the trailers, like they're really just doing a great job of getting the, of getting me hyped up and ready for this game. And I, I, also, go, go for it. Where no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, we do that a lot, I realize. Yeah, it's but, because uh, Yeah. But uh, one thing I was going to say was, did you watch any of the stuff from C2E2? No, I, didn't, stuff I, I to? didn't get to see anything, no. Okay. Well, there's two cuts, well, technically three, but two that you can easily find on find good quality of on the YouTube. One is Sub-Zero and Scorpion working together. Against the Cyberling Quay. Okay, that's awesome to see. Yeah, they are kicking straight ass. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. not they. Scorpion's kicking straight ass. We're gonna get Sub Zero goes away. Classic Sub. <laughs> Getting the hell out of there. But, the, but yeah, so that's one. And another is from the first chapter. I'm, I already know that, but Jackie, Cassie, and Sonya fight fight with Earthbound's army against. Uh, Katana Liu Kang in the nether room. They're trying to blow the place up. That's all I can tell. Okay. And, and they make them look pretty badass. Cassie's well, Cassie's just shooting, but I can even look badass in the story. Which is impressive, but I, th I think that if if this if there was ever ever going to be a game where they managed to make characters that aren't necessarily you know that cool to look at, like Jackie. Uh, Etc. Then I think this is going to be the one. Like MK11, mm. so far I seem like they're nailing everything about it. So this might be her one chance to really become a cool character and 
be interesting. Mm. Like MK MKX, I thought she was probably by far. Well, not counting Ferritor because Ferritor is just pure trash. But I think mm-hmm. Jackie is by far. Sir Ferritor, the most boring character in that game. So if they can do a good job with her here, then you know all bets are off. They can pretty much do anything with any character, and you kind of have to give them a lot of trust. And there, there hasn't been any gameplay of Jackie, right? I think yeah, there has. There has been from from C two C two E two. Is that what it's called? No, from the combat cast. From the combat. Oh, I I missed that one. Damn it. How how is she looking? She looking really good. She has a tech throw. Um, the they have they twitched it up some, and I think <laughs> it's funny when you can play. So a lot of people listen to other people's videos because they feel like they're stealing their content when they do that. Mm-hmm. But we give people props when they say these things too. So one thing I would say is there's a in the outfits they showed off of her loadouts. They were. She was wearing a dress and kind of looked like a a chronica esque dress. Huh. And somebody thought. Somebody uh, another crash was like, it might be Jackson, Jackie versus Sonya and Cassie. Or uh, who's who's right? Chronica, chronica right or not? That's that'd be interesting. I, I think that would actually be a kind of a nice little change in pace for the game. Like if if. If Sonya and Jackie maybe have a little bit of a beef, at least they're on different sides, and that might make Jackie more interesting. Because as it is, I think Cassie's definitely going to be the fan favorite in terms of between those two. So if they can kind of put them against each other, that might give her a rivalry. And yeah. all these characters, like if you look at in whatever game, whatever, you know, if it's even in sports, the biggest names all have rivals. You know, Scorpion Sub right. Zero, Kang, I think Kuma was a, not a big name because he doesn't have an actual rival. You're exactly. right. Like well, he, unless you think Liu Kang. Yeah, but, but it's different, right? It's not that exactly. it's a rivalry. It's like That's what I mean. they're on the same side. But unless you count them. Yeah. Yeah. Then, of course, there's Sonya and Kano. And Kano have their rivalry. You know, all the, all the bigger, I guess you could say, just names in Mortal Kombat. And you look at, you know, sports. You have Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. You have, in team sports, you have Man United versus, you know, Liverpool. You have... All these things, Real Madrid, Barcelona, basketball, Celtics, Lakers, it's every all the huge, the biggest pop, things in popularity, they all have rivalries. So that could be the opportunity for them to push Cassie Cage a little bit because I think a lot of people are, are still kind of a little bit bitter about how the way, about how MKX ended with her just, you know, having the force thing and being able to defeat Shinnok like that. I think that a lot of people kind of got pissed off at that. And so maybe having her and Jackie have some issues, that could be a nice little way to get both of them a little bit more momentum and get a little, get people a little bit more excited about seeing them in the future. You're right there, too. Like, Rivals makes a character. Because you look at... King Chief thinks so. That's another good one. You mm-hmm. think about it. New Psyba on Sub-Zero. Yep. Sector and Cyrax. It's just like each like someone has a counterpart, and that what makes it makes or break someone sometimes. Yeah, that could, that's it's pretty. Yeah, it seems like that's pretty much how it is. It's just about everywhere because it always has to be. If there's something that's pushing you to be better, or something that's pushing you to to drive on in terms of story or whatever it is, if there's something pushing against you, it tends to make things better. So, and it, it tends to make you better as a character, as a person, whatever. So, yeah, as an athlete, etc. So. I think that's definitely a great opportunity for them to, if that does happen, if that does happen. So that could just be a little piece of gear or something like that. It's, it's kind of hard to tell, but we'll see. I guess we'll find out in, in, about, yeah, in, a, in a month, in less than a month now. Just less than a you, fucking month, dude. You can't see my face right now, but I have the biggest grin on my face. I think I just found a, like a tag team rivalry. Like what? Okay. So... We see Scorpion and Sub-Zero working together now, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. And now, and a lot of people are convinced, well, not convinced, but I kind of get the feel that maybe, because we're going to talk about Frost. We're going to tell you Frost was on the roster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but haven't been officially confirmed. Well, one thing I'll say with that is what if, 
it's going to be Scorpion's new side I like that. I, re- I really like that because that's that's a great opportunity to really build up Frost because she's always had kind of that you know confrontational personality. She's hard to control. So that would be a great way to, once again, you know, build rivalries. We talk about rivalries. Sub-Zero and, Sub- and Scorpion, in the new timeline, they aren't rivals anymore. Like, they have the quest well, hell, rivalry, they're, but they're friends. They're yeah, they're still being rivals back in Daily Alliance. It's not the first time it happened, remember? That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I guess kind of... You know, MK9, the rival, the rival was still there. Yeah, this is in a bigger way. Yeah, yeah. So I guess. But I'm saying like that would be a good one. It definitely would. Especially because... if somebody bring. So one thing that I remember is that new side about the whole thing was when he came back and free from everyone's control, was that he wanted to make his own army, but he wanted to cyberize them too, so they listened, so that they, he had full control. So if Frost coming back and working with Chronica to bring back the cyborgs, and then New agrees with that and decides to work with her as well, it's pretty much the same thing that happened with Noob and Smoke. Yeah, that is pretty true. I like, uh, there's there's so much they can do with that, and that's yeah. a great little twist and a great little callback to, of course, Deception. Deception. And... Like I gotta be honest, with you, that, when when they started to interrupt you, but when they first uh, posted the picture of Noob Saibon, I think it was on Instagram when I first saw it. Uh, mm-hmm. They had it where it looked like it was Noob and Smoke. So for a second there, before yeah. I actually read the caption on my stuff, I was like, "Uh oh, <laughs> Noob and Smoke are back." But, but yeah. like somebody made me uh, said something to me yesterday I worked with like you can't like I hope they bring back Smoke because you can't have Noob without Smoke. Like eh, that wasn't always the thing. But it'd be nice to see him have a partner, though. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I don't think you you need smoke to have noob to make noob. Yeah, because yeah. they were kind of only connected through that, like one game. Yeah, that was the only time they were ever really like really connected in that term, in that way. So I definitely don't think that's an issue. But I do like the idea of noob. <laughs> You know, running things, running his own group, you know, and having somebody that's uh, yeah, yeah. lied to him. I, I just think that's kind of the best way to do him. Like, it'd be a great callback and changing with Frost now, yeah, do it. adds a lot of uh, possibilities. Here's the thing, too. There's some things I'm like, if they don't do it, I'm not going to be pissed with the game. But if they don't do this, I understand. It's a way out of left field um, thing to try, but it's like, other than that, I, okay. If they brought back to Kayla, everyone would say, "All right, Frost and Takeda have a rivalry. They're pretty much the second generation of Scorpion Sub Zero, so why not?" But so this is just like the next best thing, though. Yeah, I, th- I kind of I think I, I like this a lot more than a Takeda versus Frost rivalry, just because you know the beef There's between not... Scorpion and, and Sub Zero is technically over. So why would they have beef? Because I mean... Frost is fucking crazy. Yeah, she's that bitches be crazy, but I mean, I don't know. Takeda, he kind of strikes me as as a pacifist. Yeah, he should. He's supposed to be a bit more level-headed, so I don't think he would kind of fall into that type of stuff. But least, even then, though, it's pretty much like trying to put a new twist on an old thing, which isn't a bad thing, but it's like I don't think that one would really survive. Yeah, I, I don't think that's but, the best idea around. I definitely think that Frost and Noob is a is a better combination and a more interesting one. It opens up a lot more possibilities and it just kind of, I think it would surprise more people and it would, I don't know, I just think I'd, it would kind of work better. Well, like one thing too, I thought, I think, like you have so much emotion. So, um, I forget what that channel is called. It's called Bizarre something. But they dress in sub zero squirrel costume and they react to videos and play video games. Okay. All right. And they did one this past week with the new cyborg where somebody was stressed as new and the other person was stressed as sub zero and he's pissed at sub zero for turning to be a roommate with Scorpion. Because <laughs> now they're that's the whole thing, like they live Sub Zero and Scorpion lives together on this on this little channel. But it's new you think like, Alright, so this person killed me. You're my brother and you're friends with this guy now. Okay, I see how shit works. 
And then you <laughs> and then you have Frost who's just looking at zero saying he's weak. It's like when Scorpion just be in his corner, be like backup pretty much, but still you have two people who are pitched with sub zero for Noobs I probably pissed up a Scorpion for obvious reasons. But Frost and well, Noobs I can be pissed up at sub zero for a friend for friending Scorpion and Frost just she probably always want to do her own thing. She's literally like the reincarnation of Sector almost. In many ways, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's just a, it's a great little combination of characters, you know. <clears throat> like, there's there's yeah. rivalry because of course, Frost being Sub Zero's understudy knows him very well, but Sub Zero's always had a hard time controlling her, and so if Noob Cybot can come over here, and control her, do what Sub Zero was incapable of doing. And also kind of putting in his mindset and stuff like that and turning her to more towards the evil side. That's, yeah, that's, that's definitely a lot of possibilities there for bringing back the Cyber Initiative. And let's just, yeah, there's so much there. So I'm, I'm definitely hoping that, I'm not going to lie, man. If that, if that doesn't turn out to be in the game, I might be a little bit bummed out. But, but not, <laughs> now you key, got me excited. Like, I know, I, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's I mean that's how I felt with that. Damn, I just I was I'm looking for available to see you real quick, but um, I the first video I pop, that pops up in my in my news feed is a fresh very much breaking down the the trailer and it has Luke, living Katana, living Jax, and living Luke Hang on the front. It's like this is nice test pitch. <laughs> It's it, but I, it ha, it is pretty nice to see though, right? All these characters right. finally back, not as revenants. Well, not just that, just um, I said this to my friend Leon, and I told him like, oh, like the best game that Morcom ever had put it out right now, and not just saying like because it's been years again. So the video I'm seeing you right now is 14 seconds, be your own. Okay. But um, but it's still like. It has everything. It looks have great ass gameplay. It has. It looks like it'll be a really badass story. A good, a good boss. Who I. It's like how how civil war should work. Like whose side do you really go on? Like do you root for the good guys? That's just what you need to do in general. But at the same time. Who know what's going on there? Or do you support the revenant because you still sympathize with them from um, what happened in the beginning? But who's to say that they know what happened? The past versions. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that a lot of that's gonna be explained in the in the game itself. But like, I think that's kind of one of the most interesting things about this is that you don't really know which side. Yes. I won't be honest. I didn't hear none of that because you're roboting now again. Oh, you're roboting me? Okay, hold on. How about now? Is that better? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It must have been because I was watching the video, uh, which, by the way, looks really, really good. Um, yeah, all I was saying was, I'm expecting, I'm, I'm expecting them to explain a lot of that stuff in the actual game, when the, mm -hmm. you know, when, it, when in the story mode and all that stuff. But it's, it's really interesting because we don't necessarily know who exactly is the good side. Like, we know, of yeah. course, Raiden's side of it. We know Kronika's side of it. But in the grand scheme we of know, things, yeah. what's Who the better truly, side? Who is truly, yeah. So I think it, it adds a lot of a lot of potential for characters, you know. I, I think that it's going to be kind of like a matter of each character in their past and, and I guess, present version, so to speak, are all going to experience what's going on in different ways and mm -hmm. decide for themselves as the story mode goes on which side they want to be on. I think that's going to be really nice to see because, you know, each each person has their own motives for what they do. So which side uh, are, they going to, are they going to pick? I mean, if I take a guess, um, everyone who is alive again, that's all, give me one sec, I'm moving, I'm still moving stuff while I'm doing this. Yeah, I'll cut this out real fast. Oh, no, I don't mind. 
All right, we'll just leave you in. This is classic. Uh, this is classic one realm, guys. This is what we do on the fly. <laughs> you still have lives to live. Yeah, that's true. That is very, very true. Uh, yeah. So I guess we can kind of just, if you want, we can go ahead and talk about some of the other characters. Well, yeah, we will. Get, but I want to say the thing real quick. So the only issue is well, there's a few issues. One. Uh, we still haven't talked about the story trailers now a couple of weeks ago either. That's right. We didn't do. We didn't have time to cover. We have a, like we have a lot of shit to talk about. Yeah, so might as well just get it over. Get it over here then. Yeah, fair enough. We should move on. But I'm just saying that it's if they wanted to do a good story mode, I would suggest do like how they did more versus DC. Have one side play have be side playable, but that one thing I suggest, but but I still have the same conclusion. I I agree with that one hundred percent. I think that we've we've made it pretty clear, I think, over well, have we talked about MK versus DC? I'm pretty sure. Not not like in its own specific thing, but I think that we've mentioned quite a few times that from a story mode perspective that, that game kinda nailed it because of course like mm-hmm. you can play as the good guys, you can play as the bad guys and in both cases, it kind of ends in the same way, so they should yeah. they should just do that with the new one because that gives the chance for the bad guys to shine, gives a chance for the good guys to shine, and it doesn't just turn well, into good guys just beat the shit out of the bad guys and they just seem kind of bums. That's the thing too. We didn't know who's on whose side, honestly, with the story mode trailers we're getting. Because yeah. the only thing we know, only thing we can tell in general is that Jay is loyal to Katana. That's one thing. She's not loyal to Shao Kahn, she's not loyal to Raiden, she's loyal to Katana. Like, okay. That's, I'm okay with that. That's a a common fact. The other thing is, too, like, alright, so, I'm assuming anyone who's dead is loyal to, um, Kronika. But who all disdains the, the past or the present right now? That's the real question. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a, a really interesting mix of what the hell is going to happen. Like, we we already know, like you said, people that are alive probably want to keep the things as they are in the present. You know, the special forces, etc. Then, of course, you have well, like, Kotal Khan who wants to keep things the way they are. Because if not, if they go back to how it was, then Shao Kahn has the power or Onaga, and he doesn't. So, well, let me see, like, well, here's a prime example. Kong Lao, well, Shao Kahn killed Kong Lao. Mm-hmm. Living nor dead. I'm pretty sure he has a problem with that. You would assume so, at least. So if Kronka is recruiting Shao Kahn, and she was recruiting uh, Liu Kang, Katana, Kung Lao, you'd think that she, he's going to have a problem working next to the same guy who killed him. Yeah, that's true. So that's where it just comes down to, like, we have to... The story mode looks great, but it's like, who is really on whose side? And how, does this, how are they going to explain that? Yeah, like, I got. I got to be honest with you. Like, this is by far the most excited I've I've, I've ever been. I think to see what Play happens story in story mode. Yeah, in in a Mortal Kombat game like MKX, like MK9, it was a fun. It was a great game, a phenomenal game, arguably the best in the series. But the story mode, when you really look at it, it was it was really messed up. Like the yeah. way the lore went on, it was messed up. So going into that MKX, yeah. I was worried. Sorry, I was. I was. No, no, you're right. Yeah, I was worried. But this game, even if MKX was a shit show, it seems like they're doing something really, really interesting. That now it could turn into a giant fuck up. It really could. We don't know. We won't know until we see what actually happens on screen. Mm-hmm. But as of right now, it's looking really interesting, and I'm I'm really, 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 really excited about it. And also, the more and more I hear from Ronda, I know the tech comes to a thing that we talk about every time. But it's like the more and more I hear from Ronda Rousey from different parts, it just sounds better and better. So I'm like, I guess like she is on you now. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, as always, I'll say I'll hold my final judgment until. But this is for until all characters. The... It's not just for someone. Yeah. It's not just for Ronda. It's about. Yeah. It's for all the voice actors. I'll I'll find, I'll hold my judgment until. New or old. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, you you have to judge people based on their performance in that specific game slash movie slash show whatever it is. You know, mm-hmm. it's not it's not like just because 
be Ben Affleck was awful as Daredevil, he isn't necessarily going to be an awful Batman. Now, whether he is or not, it's for, yeah, I'm just saying, like, it, whether he was or not, that's a different story. But you can't just say he's going to be a shit Batman because he's a shit Daredevil. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, it could um... be, yeah, it's not necessarily. Uh, one's one judge. What one determines what you're going to be in the other? So, yeah. So I guess we can go. Ahead. Sorry, what you you locked up for a second? Nah. But well, it's still guy recording. So we'll figure it. I'll listen to it later. Yes. Oh, we, you going robot? What? Hold on. You going straight up robot too? Hold on. Can you hear me now? Good. Okay. All right, so I guess we can kind of move on to uh, to one of the other characters. Katana, we, did. Yeah. we already talked kind of Katana. We talked. Uh... We kind of based went on a little bit. We talked more a little bit more about him real quick too. Yeah. So this is what we just we just said what we would be a good idea. But he looks pretty nice. He definitely does. And everything's just I think everything that you wanted from your side was there. Yeah, I mean, I look forward to seeing a lot more, like, uh, you know, seeing a lot more in detail, actually getting my hands on them and stuff like that. But I think that in terms of Noob Cybot, like you said, man, everything is there. Everything from the looks, from the moveset, or at least based on what we've seen so far, from the brutality of the how, of just how evil he is, really I guess you could say. You know, he's just fucked up. So I just think that, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be an interesting one. Like, Noob Cybot, some, a character that everybody was upset that wasn't an MKX and he's making his grand return so I think it's yeah. going to be a very 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 good character to use very fun to play uh, well so I'd say like, he does have always one of the grossest fatalities yeah but that's, that's just kind of who he is right that's yeah how I mean, he's like, great still I'm not, I'm not gonna get it but it's like uh, you just see someone's hand just come out of your someone's nose and eyes and out the mouth and then just rip open. Yeah, I mean this game. I think that this game is like it's gonna be. It's let's just put it this way. It's not gonna be for people with weak stomachs. I think this is gonna be a pretty fucked up game. They're taking fatalities to an e an even higher level, which is just insane considering how. Brutal certain ones were like Ermax, little shish kebab fatality, whatever they called it, where you know he rips out your intestines mm -hmm. and it's just yeah, that was an interesting one as well. When it comes shooting out of your mouth, that was that was disgusting. But I think mm -hmm. that this game is probably gonna have even more disgusting fatalities than that. So it's... you know what makes it worse but better at the same time? What the freeze frame? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like I I do kind of like that they took that from from Injustice, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. Well, it's good. I like it. It's the best, worst thing, though. It's, like, it's great. And it's gruesome, but it's, like, that makes my stomach twirl. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it looks like a fun character I actually want to try. But I know I'm not going to stick with him for long. Yeah, just because you also have uh, issues with him, right? You uh, always have uh, debates and stuff like that with your friend, who's a huge yeah. Cybot fan, in case people don't know about that. Yep, well, he got his top... Um, he's seen gameplay for two of his top three characters. He's waiting on one more. Who are they again? Noob Cybot and? Luke Kang, Noob, Cy Noob Cybot, and Sub-Zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll get Luke Kang stuff pretty soon. I don't expect oh, to be, you know... We've been seeing that by a lot of characters lately, man. I'm, I'm sure we get something for Katana, Katana soon. I'm sure we get something for Liu Kang soon. I'm sure well, we get something for Kung Lao. Uh, yeah, you're right. But I, I think, here's the thing. I, I think that, you know, because, of course, they left themselves with such a short window to release this stuff, I think that as we get closer and closer, we're going to be having some more gameplay stuff, like, put on YouTube or on Instagram and stuff like that. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think they're going to be doing... Full combat cast breaking down. They the get their trailers. I don't give a shit. Yeah, well, I just want to see stuff. I just want to see gameplay. Um, gameplay and stories. Yeah. That's the thing, too. With, even with this beta, I'm happy that we get to go with each other, but yeah. it's like. 
I didn't want to play the story mode. Yeah, unfortunately, it's less than a month, but I mean, we got, we got, we just got to stay strong, man. We got to stay strong. Oh, it's not. Um, yeah. no, I didn't need to tell you what happened recently. What happened? So, uh, my job does ship bids, where you bid on your ship, and depending on how long you've been there, you get your ship. Well, so I'm still like, kind of training right now. We don't get to bid, but our manager does. And so he was like, that's the number two guy or something. He can get to pick which ship you want. Guess who? Sh- guess who has to work on Mondays and Tuesdays now? I'm assuming that means you. Yes, which means I was the play the first day playing World Combat by myself. Oh, it's a Tuesday, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, you poor bastard. And I get Fridays and Saturdays off, which is good in the long run, but it's like, I mean, can we wait? You know, it kicks in in like two weeks, too, so. So basically perfect timing for you to not be able to play it on, not, not play it at least comfortably as soon as yeah. it launches. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I have to like, probably make some unwise choices and just go with it. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah. on the bright side, that means that we weekend. get to practice a little bit and... By the time you get home. Oh, we're, we're, no, we're still playing shit. So I get it. That's for sure. Like, well, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be playing in probably about two days. No, no, no. no. Day one. Like, I'm getting it. You have only a few hours to be ready. If you're not ready, well, you better, <laughs> hope. You better just hope GameStop does a midnight release for you. Technically, you would get it before I was there if it was midnight release in your country. Well, the way I know, I'm not doing it with GameStop. I'm doing it with Amazon. That's right. Because fuck. Oh, Amazon. that's right. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll, I'll have the game around probably one to two p.m. my time, which means it'll be yeah, let's just say five to six a.m. your time. Yeah, so you probably if I don't if I believe in sleeping, which I think that throws my whole day off too. Like only thing I can think of is probably leave work early. Because I don't know if they're going to do a midnight relief to the games if I order. Kick them off and close at, close at any time. I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, I'm, I would assume that they were going to do a, a midnight relief. It's, it's a pretty big game. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, for that one, yes. But, they, but I know they didn't do it for Injustice, so that's why. Yeah, I think Injustice is a different story, though. Sure, but... But you never know, I don't know. Safe. Yeah. They did for MKX, so... Yeah, it's hard to call. Well, it's too early. It's too early to act. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, for sure. But I would definitely assume. But so. we, I mean, I go to GameStop because they typically do. Well, in Justice last year, they gave away jerseys. Oh, that's so. right. Yeah, they gave away the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw some of those on. on I mean, I never got one, so I'm pissed. But I could have. Yeah. To be fair, like it's it's injustice, so it's cool, but. It's still just injustice. If it was MKX, it was like didn't get to. It's nice to just hang up somewhere though, buddy. It is. It is. It is for sure. Right. So Jackie. Yeah, let's go and talk about Jackie. Like, uh, I think I've I've said this quite a few times. You know, I'm not the, I'm not a huge fan. Actually, I'm not a fan at all of Jackie. But if they if they can make her interesting, then I'll give her a fair shot. I mean, if they're if they're gonna do it, like I said I'll earlier, I'll you that combat cast. Yeah, definitely send it over to me. I'll, 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 I'll see you come back cast later. But one thing I will say is fucked up what happened to Colicon though. Yeah. So they hyped it up to be Colicon's trailer, your trailer, and he dies in his own trailer. I did see that trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was kind of funny, wasn't it? Like this is kind of like funny, going back to. But like... Like... Going back to Reptile and MK4. <laughs> and Baraka and MK Gold. I've, I've always kind of liked All that type deals of stuff. are off. Yeah, like every, anybody well, dying was... in their own stuff, it's just it's just funny to me. Yeah, but it's like... I feel like it was, Somebody said it felt like it was scouted, though. Like No one was going to be excited for a Jackie trailer because of what they did. But they say, hey, it's Cole Khan's trailer. And I think the logical thing, well, for me, it was um, to have Aaron Black to me show him recently, or Devore, but they showed Jackie, like, okay, that's cool, but 
Jackie's, Jackie's not going to win, is she? Oh, oh she's doing her, her bell book. She's going to pull a console book, right? She's, oh, no, she's winning. I mean, she's going to kill him now. <laughs> that was literally the reaction I had. It was, it was still badass. I was watching my car. But it was like, it was like oh, so she's not going to kill him because, well, this is his trailer. Oh, oh no, she's... Oh, she she's she's punching his head. In. Oh well, he's not gonna he's gonna come after this, right? Oh no, she's throwing a bomb in it. Oh, it's not a bomb. It's a reflective shield. I guess is what it's called. And this cat's gonna happen. Like, oh, he died in his own trailer. That is a first, bitch. <laughs> well, let me let me tell you this. Like, I think that just kind of goes to show how little respect Koto Khan gets in terms of being a con of Outworld. Like, you can't even imagine that happening to Shao Kahn. Well, I think, like I said, it goes back to no one would have been excited to see jacking so they showed her off the best like, way they could. By hijacking a trailer? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I'm just saying, like, you can't imagine that happening to somebody like, Shang, so, to somebody like Shao Kahn. So, I, I don't know. I, th- I feel like a lot of people in the community, myself included, don't really like Koto Khan that much I, I like the fact that he has a lot of Aztec type stuff to him you know eating uh, cutting open hearts and stuff like that and drinking the blood and stuff I like all that stuff I like his look as well there's just something about him as a as the ruler of Outworld that I'm not that big of a fan of but you I, believe it's just it. because, because I'm a huge, such, a, such a huge fan of Shao Kahn you believe that guy can be emperor that's the thing I agree like we're used, to Shang, we're used to Shao, we're used to Onaga, we're used to you know these huge, brooding, just powerful beings, and then Kodokan gets beat up, literally, by Kung Jin, I think it was. So I mean, yeah. Yep. Yep. So wow, great, great emperor that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. No, I agree. All right. So now who do we got? I mean, I guess we can go ahead and talk about Kodokan. Yeah, I mean, we did talk about Larry fucked him up so far. Yeah, I mean, no. they fucked him up, but like in terms of of how how excited are you to see nice him? As well. Yeah, hit or miss, but I'll still play. Yeah, I think that he's like he's a character. They, that, sorry to interrupt you, but like in terms of story, uh, I don't I don't like him there because, like you said, he's not really a believable emperor. But in terms of gameplay, I kind of like the way he plays. I, I think they have made, done a good job to make every character look good gameplay wise. I think the only one I've seen that I've not been super excited for was Kano. Yeah, I definitely agree with you about yeah. Kano, but that's just because I, I don't, I've never really been a fan of his style, though. No, he's the face of the more combat franchise. Remember, he is if you if you know draw Australian maybe, but. For the rest of no, us, no. Kano's coming I mean, over. Brazil, too. But no, I know. I'm talking about, like, think about it. He's the face of the movie franchise. Who's the first thing they say? Kano. Then Luke Kane. Then Raiden. Oh, yeah. Then right. Johnny Kane. Oh, shit. Scorpion. My mind has been Sub-Zero. blown. Sub-Zero. Scorpion. Sonya. Hold my beer. Out comes Kano. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Technically, you're right. But aside from being the face. the face of Mortal Kombat, <laughs> like for me personally, I don't necessarily like his move set. I don't necessarily like anything about him, apart from the fact that he's is derivative from the movie, and yeah. he's just not really a character I've ever particularly cared about. I agree. Like, I never went to a game and like, oh, I gotta play Kano. Yeah, he's he's never yeah. been my go-to guy. He's never been somebody I want to play. Like he's he's usually you know one of the last characters I try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will. Has be sent back that up. <sighs> but oh, I do else? I do like the I do like the fact that they they went back to him being bald. I like that look, the, the old Richard Davizio look. I like that a lot. One thing he said he has hair in one, but in the in the old time, in the old version, to bring him back, he's bald. Yeah, I like that a lot. So the president needs to have hair. I'm just trying to figure out who's going to be fighting who, too. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. 
from the story trailers that we've seen so far, we at least know that Cassie's going to be working with the young version of her parents. It's just kind of a mind fuck, right? Yeah. Well, so I kind it kind of confirms so people are douches, and also I I am stubborn and lazy and will listen to anything because it's convenient. And I'm not gonna ruin it for you because you, but I it's officially it doesn't officially, but it makes me think what someone said actually affects the whole story. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna hold it to myself because it's my own damn fault for not walking away from a podcast when I should have. Okay, all right, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. But um, but yeah, I like it's like a good twist. Me see Jack he working with Harold younger first version of her dad. I think that is. And then oh, so did you watch that other video I just sent to you as well? Uh, I didn't. I have OBS open. Let me go check real fast on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, that is from the oh, first there. chapter, but it's, yeah. Let's see. Okay, fifteen seconds long is short. All right. So that no, that was the Sub Zero and Scorpion one. I think. Oh no, hold on. Oh, this your second one. Yeah. There's a Magic the Gathering trailer real fast. Okay, minute okay, fourteen seconds. This might be picked up through my through the feed. So if you guys are watching this, then. This is a MK11 story mode cutscene. Cassie Cage, Jackie Ch Jackie Briggs. Probably already seen this. Yeah, I've seen this is this is from the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from yeah. the trailer, yeah. Well like, this is This is from PT32. Okay, yeah. Like, I just love the character. I shit my so mouth is Exactly, that's my mom and shit. And so, alright, now hear me out. So, my uncle wants, so, my cousin wants to get, my twin cousin wants this game. And, my uncle asked me, like, how bad do you think this game is? Like, oh, Keith, okay, you're asking me to go against everything I believe in, but, be honest as well. <laughs> that sucks. And, so, I tell him that, it's a violent game. I will say that. And then he said he waited too long to tell them no, so they're asked their mom instead, and she said they can have it. So they get the game now, but then I get to I just see the shit like oh fuck. My mom was like, my mom, because she was told, my mom was like, you can't say no now, Keith, because that disrespect that disrespecting your wife as a as your wife. As a mother and as a woman. Then I showed her um, the trailers I just showed sent to you from Scorpion Sub Zero, Jackie, Sonya, and Cassie, and then the new Cybots trailer. And she's like, I kind of want to take back my word what I told Keith. Make him be the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, now she's like, she was saying, like, it was dis disrespecting them, but now she's like, maybe they shouldn't be playing this game. How old are they, by the way? Fourteen. Oh well, I think that's that's definitely old enough. But they have other they have cousins, they have little brothers that are ten. Well, uh, I don't know. I'm. I'd let it. Do, I. I mean, I. I. I don't. I don't have kids, so I couldn't really say like I would let my kids do it. But if I was ten years old and I was playing that <laughs> stuff, I don't think I'd have an issue. So <laughs> I'd be more than happy to play it. I'd. I'd volunteer mm -hmm. to put myself through that trauma. In order to play the game. Yeah. I mean, I did, and I can not find, but also we didn't have all these graphics back then either. That's true. Like, the realism was a completely different thing than what it is now. I mean, if you look at that stuff, then if you're susceptible to uh, not necessarily understanding human anatomy and understanding how how physics work, then you might think that's that's real and that's possible, but... I mean, um, it's technically it is like if you. It, it does how the the human body works, but it doesn't bounce back like that. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean more than like in the, in terms of fatalities, like new, like you know, people going inside your body and weird stuff happening. Like, 
you know. Now that's what was, that was my defense too was a it's more of a magic based game now than it is realistic. I I don't think I've ever looked at Mortal Kombat fatalities as something that's like you know except for like chopping people up and stuff like that. that's definitely possible but like in terms of like the the actual character based fatalities I've never really seen any of those and like wow those are those are those are realistic in any way whatsoever it's it's pretty clear that it's all based on you know fantasy world magic powers and stuff like that so I would say that if they're if they're 14 sure that's, de- that's definitely old enough to play without any issues as long as they don't have any you know pre they have no violence. they have yeah. ma- they don't have many violent tendencies right now. Yeah, so I stumped those. <laughs> I'm not going to no, ask you how. There's but... a ra- there's like this. There's a ranking, I can say, on the on air too, but I want to say anyway. It's my uncle, the kids, then me. In terms of what? That's the, rank, that's the pecking in order. Okay, so you're below the kids. No, no. I, that's coming from that's from lowest to highest. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah. you are the highest, all right. Yeah. So, like, they, I hate to say they do walk over him, but I can also crack the whip and gain respect. Mostly because I did break the break the number one rule with kids. We agree to. We have to make it seem like more people does not affect people, psyche, make them do bad things. And I have done these kids, these 14 year olds, and arm board for the past year or two. Well, I mean, I, I, I 100% believe like you can play violent video games and not be a violent person. It's just. You know, it's like watching violent movies, but it doesn't make you a violent person necessarily. Like, of course, if you're predisposed to that type of stuff, then sure. You know, it's probably better if you avoid it because it might give you ideas and it might kind of get you, you know, up, hopped up on, a, on adrenaline and make you want to do the stuff that maybe you're a little bit uh, impulsive towards. But if you're just a relatively normal person who doesn't want to murder everybody he sees, then I think that playing Mortal Kombat or watching John Wick, for example, I don't think that there's <laughs> really anything bad in that. It's just it's just entertainment. Like you're not you're not playing what was the game called? What was it uh um back on PS two it was a rock star game that had to be cancelled. I wanna say Manhunt, but I don't think it was called Manhunt. Um, I don't know. But I can tell you that this that I'm I'm out of the four I'm considered I'm concerned twenty five percent. Why all the way up to 25%? Because there's four of them, and I'm only concerned by one. Ah, okay. And, but I'm also most proud of this one because I see myself in this one. Hmm. That's, that might not be a good thing, but... Well, let me put it like this. Um, so day two of the stress test, I went over there to let them play it and watch the news. And one was like, okay, cool, whatever. And he went back to play my World of Warcraft. The other watched the more Kombat like trailer, the special announcement trailer, about well, five times before the game got done. <laughs> down, uh, installed. So, so yeah, he's prom- he's promising. <laughs> he's got talent. <laughs> he could be on this show. Yes, he could eventually take over the the realms of this show. Yeah, take over the yeah. reins. But um, I mean, he just he got really good at it too, like at games based aspect. But he also used the scorpions; it doesn't count. Well, there is one thing I guess you could say. Like, he, was he is he one of the ten year olds or is he one of the fourteen year olds? Fourteen. Fourteen. So at that age, I think that's kind of where you're like you're you're in your prime, so to speak, when it comes to video games. That's kind of where you pick it up as fast as possible, but you can mm-hmm. also you know take it lightly and not necessarily go crazy. Like I remember. When I was fourteen to around sixteen or seventeen, mm-hmm. I was I was just phenomenal in, in in all video games I played compared to how I am now. Like I played FIFA back then, like I think it was FIFA eleven or twelve or something like that, and I had a record of like mm-hmm. three hundred wins and like five losses, or something like that. Nowadays, I just I can't even get that if I literally paid people to lose. It's just 
I, I, same thing in Halo. Like back in Halo, my, my reflexes were phenomenal. I was, I, you know, always averaging 25 to 30 kills per match and something like that. My brother would get 20, 25 kills per match as well. And it was just, it, it was awesome. But nowadays, you know, I don't know if it's just me being older, me not playing as much, but I feel like in in all games, whether it's fighting games or sports games or shooters, it it just feels like at this age I'm already I'm already losing my step. I'm already losing my ability to react fast. So I think that 14 years old, if you're giving somebody who's already interested in it, because you said he, he watched the trailer a bunch of times, so he's clearly got interest in what he's looking at. So I think that he has the enthusiasm and he probably has the right age really to to learn this stuff fast and I, I kind of envy that because if if at his age I'd have really focused on learning combos and stuff like that in those fighting games and mm. I may have been able to actually do something because I, I was I had a natural inclination to learning all of these games but just never really had the drive to to really go deep and and learn stuff for fighting games because it's just I never really like I gotta be honest with you like it wasn't until I started listening to that other cast where I realized how just how deep fighting games really are Yeah, you're right. Part, also, I was just looking at the um, old school versus new school. I think we just I just saw the King Vitality. Really? Yeah. Huh, send it over if you can. So I'll you, watch it later, yeah. yeah. Well, I seen the, I seen, you already have this one, but if you go to minute... Uh, give me one second. Go to second eighteen, and you'll. I think that's his fatality. Of of which video? The one you just sent me? No, the very first one. Old school versus new school. Ah, okay. Yeah. You said eighteen seconds. Yeah. Let's see. And if it is, it's it's bad. <laughs> this is also why. But seeing this fatality also kind of back up my theory about the more than two fatality. By the way, for the old school versus new school trailer, they picked the best song possible. Go back to the 90s. Mm -hmm. Which, the first one the second song? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, the animality. I mean, not the animality, the dragon fatality. Yeah, I saw yeah. that earlier too, I noticed it too. But, yeah, but it that good. makes... I mean, I'm hoping like I'm right on this whole... More than two fatalities. I'm hoping too. I'm really, really hoping because I think that's kind of a issue that they have is that they they get old pretty quick. So if they can have more than two, that's that's a good that's a good step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. At least I don't. Okay, four is asking for way too much. I know because you said it might get repetitive as well. But they also have four years to work on this game, and we've seen the stuff they've been coming up with. So I kind of hope it is four. Because some of the go better, so that one kind of goes better with the red one. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of like it. Like, even if, well, this is kind of, this might sound kind of stupid. It, it probably is kind of stupid. But what if you can equip different fatalities as, as, that's what I'm as abilities? Yeah. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not what you yeah. mean. Yeah. More okay. than two, so you can change them out. Okay. Yeah. 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 And the, the, we won't know any of this stuff until the full game comes out either. Yeah, it's just, it's, I think that might be, like, the most frustrating thing about this build-up to this game is, like, in MKX and, I guess, MK2. You had nothing to work with. You had nothing to work with, really, but, like, yeah, I don't know. It was just, like, in MKX or in MK9, too, it was, it was different. It felt like I knew a lot more about the game than I do for this one. You know what I'm saying? Like, this one is, I don't know, it just seemed like it's all up in the air and it's, it's looking extremely interesting, what makes things even more difficult. Mm -hmm. like we have so much, and we have. It's a good story plot. It's a good. Um, it's a good everything about this game. And now it's like. Hey, I want this game now. And, yeah, we gotta wait. Fuck, dude. It's the 26th of, of March, and the 23rd of April just can't come fast enough. And. April's going to be a very, very busy month for me, and it, it's good because I think that the end of April's going to be pretty solid for me. The 19th, my uh, my favorite burger place around here opens back up. The 22nd, mm -hmm. I'm going to be seeing my favorite band in concert. The 23rd, MK. 
and then there's something later that month as well. I can't remember exactly what it is, but there's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting uh interesting few uh few weeks towards the end of April for me. So I'm look I'm very, very, very much looking forward to this. Oh yeah, and then Endgame. That's what it is. Avengers Endgame comes out the twenty fourth here. So it comes out two yeah. days earlier here than it does in the US, which is just doesn't make doesn't make any sense, but I'm happy. I'm more than happy to to see it the twenty fourth. So, I mean, I still get more combat before you do. So I don't give a shit. Eh, I'm not too worried about that, buddy. And I still get to play it before you do too. Eh, so I really don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. How about this? As soon as, soon as I finish watching Avengers Endgame, I'm gonna spoil exactly what happens to you. I don't read your text messages all the time. Yeah, well, so I'm gonna I'm call good. you. I'm gonna call you because you're gonna forget. I'm gonna put you on. You're gonna forget because. You know, we're dudes. Most we're likely this true. Type of stuff. So, I will call Most you, likely. and my very first word would be, "Thanos got his ass kicked," and you're gonna. Well, be that's like, kind of obvious, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna. Uh, you might. You never know. They might. They might just change it, and next thing you know, Thanos is killing everybody once again. But I mean, so I'm my re- question I'm is this: So, do you qualify as United Kingdom or Europe and the Middle East? Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm Europe and the Middle East because United Kingdom mm-hmm. is different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you're good six o'clock my time. Yes. The game should drop at the same exact time for everybody, basically. Well, not six o'clock. Uh, four o'clock my time. Sorry. Yeah, in the afternoon, right? Yeah, four p.m. Yeah, yeah. And I get it at eight p.m. Mm-hmm. Wait, how is that? Well, there's also yeah, a lot of different idea. time zones in Europe, so it's it's kind of just it just kind of depends. Well, no, Ed even confirms saying like, this is going. Oh, yeah, in America's yeah, it's eight a.m. Mm-hmm. And then for yeah, but I feel bad for the Asians because they have to wait the longest. Yeah, them the Australians, they always kind of get the mm-hmm. short end of the stick. Sucks to be them. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, luckily I don't live all the way the hell over there. Where everything mm-hmm. is, they're basically a day ahead of us. So yeah, screw that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, who else? There's definitely characters we haven't talked about yet. I guess we can mention Cassie. Yeah, really K- well, we already did Kano before, so we're we're doing Kano. Yeah. Um, is no, Cassie. Though? We kind of touched on her. We didn't really talk much about her, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, Cassie. I think it has. I don't know. I feel like we kind of touched upon what we, they can do with her throughout the whole game because one, we can talk we talk about how she can have a rivalry with she can have being best friend, she can have a rivalry with Jackie. Or and then her game, first of all, I think she has eh, I don't want to say two of the best, but at least one of her fatalities definitely falls into the top five for me. Which one are you talking about? The, the tweet or the bubble? It's hard, it's, they're both hard to say. So there's... Like they're both... I, have, I want to look at all the fatalities before I make my list, officially. But you have the... One where she's... You know, the one in the trail where she's chasing... Where she's running you down and then... Kicks you so hard your spine comes out. After dick. And then you have... The shadow kick... She makes it hard. I mean, kiss, make a kiss in the arm. Like, that's cute. It kind, of, it kind of reminds you of the selfie, selfie one from last year. Yeah, I think that like one of the best things that they do with Cassie isn't necessarily even story related. It's just that she oozes her personality. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's something that she get it from her dad. Exactly. Definitely didn't get it from her mom. Let me tell you there. But. <laughs> But uh, what are you talking about? Sonya is such a. Yeah. It's always just oozing personality. Yeah, she's a ray of sunlight, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I, yeah, I think that like one of the common things that we see when we when we talk about like that's one of the best fatalities or that's one of the most entertaining, etc. Is it has to really be personal to the character that's doing them. Like we don't really want to just see like, oh look, Scorpion. Pull out a sword and chopped off his head and then his arms and blah blah. We that's all. Anybody can do that in, in the series, but we want to see fatalities that are really represent 
the personality of the character number one and what they are in terms of like their moves and stuff like that. So, I mean, uh, that looks like I think that kind of falls into like half of J. Because like, um, in MK9, we're gonna be honest, those were very few people had good fatalities. Yeah, I agree with that. But, 100%. Uh, like Jay, like like at the very short end of that stick because, um, she <laughs> so one fatality was she would cut off your head with the glaive and then shadow kick and catch the head. Really impressive. Yeah, it was like phenomenal. But like you said, like and the other one was shit. The other one was a kick. Uh, with a kick to the, kick your body up, throw the staff, rip your head off, and throw it on top of the staff. What to do, right? Yeah. But now, she breaks your back, pops your eye out, slices you open, and gives you a little swirl. <laughs> a little That's swirl when... part. <laughs> no, so there's this, all right, so there's this people, uh, this couple I watched, and they, I love them more and more every day because they are now. I find out they're more comeback fans. Like, oh, this is just even better. But they're watching the whole Jade trailer thing, and at the end when she twirl, when like they come up to the and they do everything. <laughs> After everything happens, and she twirls them, he just hit him with that twilight twirl. I'm like, I can rock with that. <laughs> so I'm, I feel like making a shirt now saying, hit him with that twilight wow. Oh, no, um, and then even her new, I mean, we saw her new one, the beta trailer, which I don't know, like I saw we saw in the beta trailer, and that was nice too. It wasn't like I mean, you say like cut your cut off the arm and stuff like that. It's like it's not crazy, but it does fit because you're still an assassin, so. It fits her, but it's like it's still kind of bland. But it does have the personality; like she's that skilled. Yeah, I think that like the biggest thing is all of these fatalities. They just need to represent the character. Like they don't have to necessarily like be the most outlandish or the most mm-hmm. flashy fatality, as long as they fit the character that's doing them. That's all. I think that's kind of all we can really ask for, right? Right. So I mean, I think that so far, based on everything that I've seen, I'm. I'm pretty happy with all the fatalities I've seen so far. Like, none of them look stupid or boring or anything like that, and they all just kind of seem to fit the person that's doing them. And I think that Jade is definitely one of those characters that definitely she needs benefits. this game. Yeah, she benefits, and she definitely needs this game to really just kind of cement herself as the character that we all kind of like, but this is her opportunity to really become a character we all love. Another thing too, which I realized, is a lot of people. I didn't know this was a, a big thing that people see Jade as, but she's always been known as Katana's fan friend. I'm like, no, oh, she's a character. She's a character, right? Like, no, she's mostly just Katana's friend. Like, that's sad. So hopefully, this game does. From the, from the intro, it doesn't look that way, but hopefully they. They come together with something and make her more than just the blue girl's friend. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like, I, I was guilty for that of that for quite a while there. To where I just thought that she was kind of... I Not that I thought that that's what she was. Because obviously we know I knew she was an assassin. And I knew that she has a, a deep history. And she has a pretty interesting story as well. Like, if you look at, you know, the depths of it. But I also do have to admit that I, I did kind of look at her as like, eh, she's just kind of portrayed as Katana's friend. She's Katana's Mm -hmm. bodyguard and stuff like that. So it's like, I mean, yeah, this is is an opportunity for them to really shine with a lot of characters that haven't been able to shine before. So Jade is definitely one of those characters that need it. All right. All right. I feel like we got off topic a lot today, but I think we we know it, though. Yeah, I'm thinking, are we missing one person? We talked about Jackie. We talked about Shang Tsung. We talked about Kano. We talked about, talk about Jax. Katana. Did we talk about Jax? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not really. Well, no, not really about Jax. Yeah. We can like. I, we... I, I want to say one thing about Jax. And then that's there's not really a whole lot to go on because we haven't really seen gameplay or anything well, like that. But I'm and happy. We to see one. It. I was like, oh, yeah, we 
last night. We've seen more gameplay of Jackson than we did of Katana still. That's true, but I mean, I think yeah. it's kind of different. Like, Katana is a character yeah, I, I really, really, really want to see stuff of. Whereas Jax is like, we know how Jax is going to play. Let's just be real. Yeah. Well, not even that. It's just, I think me and one of us are like the biggest Jax, Jax friend, um, fan. So it's like, we have to wait for the trailer to we actually. He does, it is a really good model of him. I'm going to say that. The arm looks amazing. They don't look too bulky. They don't look too more machine than, they look like an actual arm. It's made out of metal. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I'm generally not the biggest fan of Jax necessarily as a character, although I do like him, but I like to play as him. Not often. Like, I'm not, he's not a character that I'm like, okay, I want to main as him. But he is a character that every time I use him, I enjoy because he's just a completely different style to almost everybody on the roster. So I think that because he's. In the so words itch, of Django, I mean, in the words of Django, it is he's the body slam guy. Yeah, he's the body slam guy. He's the, the power slam guy. Yeah, the power bomb or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Like, so, I mean... Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's how we're going to describe these characters. Now. Okay. The fangirl. The dragon guy. The rope. I know, you're just joking. But yeah. Yeah. The ice dude. The dead ice dude. <laughs> the ice girl. The time witch. The dude with the, time the bad bitch. teeth. And Baskin. Yeah. The chick who will bite your dick off. Yeah, that's probably not the best. Uh... With lips now. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's, dude, improvements. <laughs> improvements. <laughs> Angelina Jolie became Melina, so. Yeah. Uh... Well, she played her in the movie. That's true. <laughs> nah, that wasn't true. <laughs> It'd be, uh, whatever. Might have been <laughs> not a big fan of Angelina Jolie myself, but not, not yeah. I don't know. She seems like a, a bit of a psycho bitch, but that's that's a story for a different day. Um, different podcast. Angelina Jolie, we know we're li- you're listening, so don't take offense to my words. Those the opinions of Diego Call are, of course, the opinions of Diego Call and only Diego Call. So Thomas Tipton, or I don't know if you want your, your last name to be out there, but Thomas. Uh, Too late now. Yeah, sorry. I can just bleep that out real fast. Um, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so that, <coughs> anyway, well, well, Angelina, that, that is my opinion. So don't be, don't be pissed off at him. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I guess that's kind of yeah. That's pretty much it for me. Like, I'm happy to see Jax. We already know basically how he's gonna play because he is the power bomb guy, the power slam guy, whatever you want to call him. That's just that's his niche. That's what he does. That's how he's gonna play. So I'm excited to see him come back and try him out, but. He's not necessarily like, I'm like, ooh, 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 he's back. Hmm. Yeah, so, any closing remarks? Well, I mean, we both get the beta this week, so excited for that. And the fact that I can actually, we can actually practice without getting our ass kicked the entire time. That's true. We can play against each other I, and help each other out. Hopefully we can do that. Yeah. Oh. Well, not even that, like, we get the towers, too. Yeah, have, have, they've, have they said if it's going to be open, if it's going to be region blocked? For for the beta or have they? I've heard nothing. Yeah, I know they've already just go ahead, went ahead and said that the game itself is gonna is gonna be open region, so we can play against each other for sure when the full game releases. But they might do it to where the beta is only gonna be specific regions. I'm hoping not, but regardless, I'm gonna be recording a lot of gameplay. Uh, I'm sure I'll be recording our gameplay if we are able to to get mm-hmm. it going. And uh, yeah, like like we always say, don't expect amazing gameplay from me. I'm gonna go ahead and say or that. me. Yeah, because that's not really our, necessarily our thing. We're we're pretty yet. basic. Yeah, not yet. This right. game, I think we're both we both kind of have ambitions to be decent, at least fighting game players. So I'm I'm excited to give this game a shot. I think it's gonna be this is gonna be a more kind of game I play for quite a while, in like MKX. Well, I don't think I'm done here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, guys, like. Thank you so much for listening to anybody who stuck around to the end. Definitely, you know, we we appreciate the hell out of it. We appreciate anybody who uh, who shares any of this stuff and you know helps us helps us build this. Of course, it's it's a slow process, but it is something that we're we're working towards. And at the end of the day, we're just two dudes talking about Mortal Kombat. So if you enjoyed it, thank you so much. Let us let us know in the comments if you have anything that you want to talk about, anything that we missed, anything that. It's kind of getting you excited about this game or is kind of bothering you. Just anything you want to talk about MK-related, just let us know. 
and we'll be sure to get to you. So thank you so much for listening, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Later.